In the years following World War II, amid rapid industrialization and rising urbanization, the world began to ask questions it had never asked before. Could civilization collapse from too much success? Could a society with unlimited resources still fall into chaos? One man sought to answer that question, not through philosophy, but through cold clinical observation. His name was John Bumpass Calhoun, a behavioral researcher and ethologist working under the National Institute of Mental Health in the United States. And in July of 1968, he began what would become one of the most disturbing and prophetic social experiments of the 20th century. He called it Universe 25. Calhoun's hypothesis was deceptively simple. In the absence of external threats, no dangers, no starvation, no disease, would a population thrive indefinitely? To test this, Calhoun constructed a self-contained habitat, a near-perfect city for mice. It consisted of metal walls, food dispensers, water bottles, nesting boxes, stairways, and compartments, all sanitized and climate controlled. It could comfortably hold up to 3,840 mice. The experiment began with just eight mice, four males and four females, carefully selected for their health and reproductive capacity. For the first 100 days, the colony grew slowly. This was known as phase A, the establishment phase. The mice explored, formed social structures, and began reproducing. Then came phase B, exponential growth. The population began to double every 55 days. By day 315, there were over 600 mice. Food and water remained abundant. There was no disease, no shortage of space, yet subtle changes began to emerge. Social bonds weakened. Dominant males became hyper-aggressive, forming territories and violently defending them. Weaker males, unable to compete, withdrew entirely. These exiled males often congregated in the center of the enclosure. An area Calhoun ominously referred to as the pool. Here the outcasts stopped mating. They stopped defending themselves. They ceased all social behavior. Instead, they obsessively groomed themselves, slept and ate. They became passive, apathetic, detached, perfectly clean, unscarred, and utterly purposeless. Mr. Calhoun called these mice the beautiful ones. The females, meanwhile, began to suffer psychological breakdowns, with dominant males constantly attacking and weaker males failing to protect or mate. The females became hyper-defensive and erratic. Many abandoned their litters or neglected their young, often killing them in moments of stress. Parental behavior broke down. Reproduction slowed dramatically. The mice that were born in this period grew up without learning basic social behaviors. They had no concept of mating, no ability to defend territory, no parental modeling. Calhoun described this generation as autistic, not in the clinical human sense, but in the literal definition, self-isolating, disconnected from social norms, emotionally withdrawn. Then came phase C, the plateau. Although food and space were still plentiful, population growth had slowed to a crawl. By day 560, the population had peaked at 2,200, well below the habitat's maximum capacity. And then, reproduction ceased entirely. This was phase D, the death phase. Despite optimal conditions, not a single new mouse was born. The colony, now composed entirely of psychologically broken adults and socially inept juveniles, was spiraling into extinction. Aggression increased, Sexual activity disappeared. Cannibalism, despite the abundance of food, started to take place in this so-called universe. Some mice simply lay down and never got up again. The beautiful ones, still immaculate, still passive, lived in silent isolation until they too died, having never reproduced, never fought, never interacted. By day 1780, the colony was dead. Not because of disease, not because of violence, not because of starvation, but because it had lost the ability or the will to live. John B. Calhoun's conclusion was grim. He said, In the most favorable conditions, we have created the most unfavorable outcomes. He believed what he had witnessed was not merely a rodent anomaly, but a profound insight into the human condition. He called it a behavioral sink, a collapse of social structure caused not by scarcity, but by excess.
To Calhoun, Universe 25 was a metaphor for modern urban life. Increasing population density, rising anonymity, broken family units, sterile interactions, and spiritual emptiness. He warned that humanity too might reach a point where, surrounded by abundance and stripped of struggle, we would forget how to be human. That comfort would numb us, that without purpose or challenge, we would collapse into ourselves, just like the mice. As we move deeper into a world where algorithms predict our needs and robots carry our burdens, we are already seeing symptoms. Declining birth rates across developed nations, epidemic levels of depression and anxiety, especially among the youth, a rise in nihilism and detachment, the sense that nothing really matters, people withdrawing from real-world interaction into digital realms, endless scrolling, VR escapism, virtual relationships. We're not facing famine or war, we're facing emptiness. Calhoun's work suggests that this is not a glitch, it's the natural consequence of abundance without meaning. Struggle has always been the engine of growth, personally, socially, spiritually. We learn through failure. We form bonds through shared hardship. We develop purpose by confronting resistance. Remove those experiences, and you don't just remove discomfort, you remove identity. In Universe 25, once the mice had nothing to strive for, they began to lose their roles. Males became neither protectors nor competitors. Females became either nurturers nor defenders. The social order dissolved, not because they lacked resources, but because they lacked necessity. This is the core insight of Calhoun's work. When life becomes too easy, life itself loses meaning. Now consider this in the context of a world with fully autonomous AI, where jobs vanish, decisions are automated, and effort is obsolete. What happens to the human spirit when there is nothing left to overcome? What happens when every problem is solved, except for the problem of our own purpose? Have you seen signs of this in your own life? In your family, your friends, the detachment, the disconnection? Did you know about the Universe 25 experiment before this? And if so, what do you think it means for our future? I'd really like to hear your thoughts. So drop a comment below, let's talk about it. And if this video gave you something to think about, give it a like, share it with someone who needs to see it, and subscribe for more deep dives into the dark, mysterious, and forgotten truths. Welcome to the Awakened Self channel. Until next time, stay awake.